Are you looking to take your smart home to the next level? Do you need more power than a Raspberry Pi? Do you want to avoid so much cabling? Well, stay tuned and I'm going to show you how to do this. Welcome to another edition of Tech Bytes with Ron Nutter, your home for all things relating to smart home technology. In this episode, we're going to talk about how to set up an HP Tiny Mini Micro as a Docker host to manage your smart home. Hi, I'm Ron Nutter, and we're going to be working on this together. This content is also available as an Amazon Flash Briefing or Podcast, Please go to techbyteswithronnutter.com for more information. For any items mentioned in this episode, there are affiliate links in the description. If you click on these links, I will get a small commission that won't affect the price you pay for the item. If you want to get notified when new content is uploaded, please click on subscribe and enable notifications. Here's what we're going to be covering in this video, and that's how to set up an HP Tiny Mini Micro to manage your smart home. First, we're going to talk about this between Raspberry Pi and a Tiny Mini Micro. We'll need to talk about the required parts and building a foundation machine that as you roll out additional ones, and you may very well do that, that you will have a consistent implementation across all the different systems, which will make troubleshooting and support a lot easier. For those of you who have watched my channel for several years, you'll know the soft spot that the Raspberry Pi had. It's an affordable, easy way to get into working with Linux and playing with things in your smart home. And there's even a version, or at least there was, a Windows 10 that you can run on the Raspberry Pi. Here's the challenge. While it can be expanded with the current supply chain situation that's going on at the time this video is being shot, and that it's becoming more expensive to get them when you can find them. You can't always find them. And then you've got to make one decision how much onboard memory you want. It's got one, two, four, or eight. And it's getting more expensive for the higher end models. Well, any of the models, really. So here's what I've started working with lately. This is the, well, you'll hear it called on serve the home which is another youtube channel the tiny mini micro this is one that is very affordable now granted this is a generation one i've got two of them and i can't really tell this problem it's an i5 at least this particular model is comes with eight gigs of memory 250 gig ssd and look at the price yes it's used but you know what that's not a problem it's got as many or let's see it's got two how many more look here in the back here we've got well we've got more usb ports than a raspberry pi the one downside is it does let me see if i can get you a picture here it only has display port that's not a problem hence the display port to hdmi adapter because in case you don't have a mantra laying around that has display port on it and have an extra cable this is easy enough to get a hold of and it's just so you've got quite a bit to work with here now this does not come with wi-fi built in but you know what that's not a problem because most of my critical smart home gear i'm running hardwired in that's just the way i've decided to go especially where where video is involved so this is something that is you you get them used so you'll get one of these in a box, you get a power supply, and depending on the packaging, you may get an extra keyboard and mouse. Okay, keyboard and mouse is a nice to have, not a gotta have, but you can see for the price that this is something that is well with an arena of affordability because depending on the kit you get with the Raspberry Pi, you're gonna be looking at close to that, if not more. The memory can be expanded. Most of the models that I have seen so far have two DIMM slots in them. So it comes with eight. You can get them with 16 and usually 16, which is more than sufficient for smart home applications will be more than enough to get you taken care of and it's typically about an only another twenty dollars more it is a nice metal chassis which is something else you'd have to go buy with the raspberry pi and i'm not knocking the raspberry pi please understand this i i like it but i've gotten to a point with some of my smart home endeavors that it's a challenge sometimes to do with the raspberry pi i'm going to be setting up a bitwarden self-hosted password server that's not going to have accessibility to the outside world. I'm not doing anything to the outside world that I don't absolutely have to have. And I'll just sync when I'm at home. I could never get that implemented on the Raspberry Pi. So there's just some things I want to do that having a straight Intel based system is going to be very handy to have. It's got a nice cooler over the CPU. Most of them come with an SSD of some flavor, 128 to 256 get the larger you can i mean it's not going to be a, a bad thing uh, and it, get at least eight gigs of ram probably 16 so this is where as we start working with docker and you're going to see uh where i talk about a link well i talk sorry 
you're going to see in this video where when we set up the Cirex NG secure search engine, and for those of you who watched the video, thank you. This has been one of my best performing videos. I did it with the Tiny Mini Micro. So well, there's some things we're going to do on top of Docker, and Docker's not for everybody, but there's a few more tools that we're going to go over this time that as you deploy more and more Docker hosts, it's going to give you uniformity of control. It's going to make some things easier to put in place. Well, now that we have got logged in and verified the IP address, and I'm all, and I'm also on a remote session, so it's going to make this a little bit easier to do for things. First, we're going to create the portainer directory as it's requesting. So we'll just right click there, preface that whole command with sudo. Okay, that appears to be okay. Then we'll copy that, do another sudo, and right click and enter. It's going to take a few minutes just to pull everything down. The next item that I am installing on all my Docker hosts is something called NetData. And there are several alternatives to this, but this is the one that I've picked and has served me well since I've been working with Docker. And this lets you see the CPU memory. It gives you a whole kind of a graphical report. Not that you probably can't get this from the command line, but there's sometimes getting it all in one central console is very handy. So let's move over here and we're on the NetData site. So we will click copy and we'll shift over here to our terminal session or actually our our putty session and we will type sudo we'll paint or paste the rest of that in it's going to pull everything down this one is probably going to install a little bit faster than portainer but it's all relative when you see the information you actually there's other packages out there this is just one of the ones that i've run across and it has served me well so i have a tendency to stick with with what works not that i won't look at some others from uh from time to time. Now that's all completed, so let's see what net data is going to get us. So what we're going to do is now this one is an unsecured, but I given this is on our local network, I don't see that as a problem. 19999. So you, th this is a very handy little tool. You can see it's it's recording. No, I'm going to stay on the agent dashboard. You can get to a central cloud console, but I'm gonna keep this the way it stands right now. So it's showing you inbound and outbound traffic, the amount of memory use, that's important to know. So that way you don't overuse things. If it's gotten into swap memory, disk activity, and over time, you will see other information as this is up for, for longer and longer. Again, one of the options out there, but this is what I'm consistently deploying across my different Docker nodes. And that way I can kind of see what's going on. And the 19999 is an easy number to remember because it's different and it's not something that any of the other containers on Docker should be using. When you're setting up that new account for the smart home cloud service or device, please get a copy of my smart home device account checklist you see here on the screen. This will help make sure that everything gets written down that you entered to get that account created. The form will also serve as a backup copy when you get this entered into your password manager app. And if you're not already using a password manager app, please get one now and get started. You will be subscribed to my email list in exchange for the checklist. I won't share, rent, or sell your information to anyone. Now, something you're going to run into, and even though you can see from from the uh, our tiny mini micro number two that's out here. I've only got two containers up and running. Depending on how much you do with a particular Docker system or how much you're loading on it, keeping it all up to date can be a real challenge. So you can either go through and do a reinstallation, which should I make them pick up the newest files, or you can use something I found about called Watchtower. And this is a tool, think of it kind of like Windows Update but this is something that is going to be make life a little bit easier for you. So we'll just take the syntax that they say to use and all the links for this will be in the, in the video description. So sudo and then we'll paste that in and hit enter. All right. Now that's done and you can go through, you can see here, you can control what containers, if you don't want it updating certain containers, then you can, if you want this to, Use an SSL certificate. That is certainly an option, not going to be a bad thing. And we'll shift over here to Portainer and we will refresh. And so you can see we've got three different containers up and running. And this is what I'm kind of calling my base system because with this, you can sit there, have good visibility into the hardware. You've got a little bit easier time to manage things with using portainer because not that you can't do it from command line but until you get to that point 
Portainer is a good way of handling things. So between that and Watchtower, you've got a, a pretty good system on which to build the rest of your smart home. The last thing we're going to look at for kind of the, the finishing the foundation build for your Docker instances in home is a utility that will allow you to go in and see with a single command, you know, the memory, anything you want to know about the hardware standpoint. So we'll do a sudo apt install hardware info. And remember to do the dash y. In this case, it wasn't that that bad. So if we do hardware info dash dash short. So we can scroll back up here. As you can see, we've got four core system. It says it's HDMI, but yeah, it's, it's going over display port. So you can see the information about the processor. It says it has wireless on it. We'll see. I hadn't uh, gone that far with looking at this one yet. But you can see the, it talks about the USB hub in it, all the different chips. So you can kind of get a, a good handle on what's going on. Now that is one command. The other one you can look at is lshw-short. Now this one gives a little bit different perspective. And this one to a degree is one that, that I like more because you can go in and it gives you the exact memory where the other one really didn't from at least the view that I had available. So it gives you yet even more information about it. And just when you're troubleshooting stuff, it's handy to know kind of what you're dealing with. If you're watching this on YouTube, you will see videos on the screen that are similar to the one you've just watched or other content that YouTube thinks you might be interested in. If this video helps you or provides value, please click on the like button, thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please click on subscribe now and enable notifications. We'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching.